Did you know exercising your eyes can actually enhance your vision? Want to know more? I'm on top of it. The John Top of It Podcast with John Meisberg, connecting you with all things interesting and helpful. Welcome to episode number one, where we're going to be talking all about vision. Now, some would argue it's one of the most important senses of them all. After all, without sight, one wouldn't be able to experience seeing all of the beauty in this world. And yet, we seem to take vision for granted. That is, until we start having problems with it. And while some may just need a pair of prescription glasses, other situations are more complicated. Luckily, there are people that can help. My guest today is my fiance, Nicole Rand. She was gracious enough to be the first guest to come on my show and share with all of you what she does. She works as a vision therapist and is on a mission to help the world see better. We'll talk what vision therapy is, who could benefit from it, and some powerful success stories of how it's helped people. And if you stick around until the end, you'll get to hear some interesting questions from our audience on social media. Enjoy! So I think a lot of people are familiar with going to an optometrist to get their eyes checked out to see if they need to be prescribed glasses or contact lenses. Not that many people have heard of vision therapy. So I thought that that would be a good place to start with this interview. If you could just explain to me in your own words, what is vision therapy? So the simplest way to put it, what I normally say to other people is if you think of a physical therapist... Vision therapy is kind of like that for eyes. So we're doing certain activities that help retrain essentially the brain and how it interprets with your eyes. So whether that be if you have eyes that are more crossed or eyes that are more out or a lazy eye or someone who has trouble tracking when they're reading Um, We can help do activities and exercises to help make your eyes work better together and more efficiently. A workout for your eyes. Yes. Like Mm push-ups. How do you do that? (laughs) How do I do that? Well, usually you go throughout life. You don't think too much about it. You go to get your eyes checked and all they do is check the acuity of your eyes. So is it clear? Is it not clear? That's what acuity is. Mm -hmm. Can you read these letters on a chart? But really, you go about life and there's so many other uses that you use with your eyes than just making things clear. In fact, the majority of your vision is peripheral vision. Things that are to the sides of you that you aren't looking at, but you're just noticing. And that's honestly how you navigate through your world, how you walk through a door how you see that there's a door, analyzing space, driving. That's hugely used when we're driving. How do we know if there's cars on the other side of us? How do we know if there's some kind of danger? We have to first notice in our peripheral vision and then we look at it. So understanding what's in our peripheral vision, understanding the space, analyzing depth. There's so many things other than just making things clear. Obviously, the way your eyes move, some people have trouble, maybe their eyes get tired when they read. You read and you fall asleep or it makes you sleepy. Well, a lot of times, maybe they haven't developed the skill of knowing how to move their eyes across a page and they're not efficient at it. And so when they do that, They think they're just not smart, but no, really, their eyes are getting so tired by the time that they're done reading the book that they don't want to read a book. Reading isn't fun for them. So what we do at our office is more than just, is this clear? It's actually making every part of vision more efficient and building eye muscles and knowing how your brain interprets that. So it sounds to me that the reason why a lot of people don't understand what vision therapy is, is because people don't look into things until they have a problem. Exactly. Yeah. 
And so most people take their vision for granted until, uh oh, <laughs> you know, things are different. So say you're someone out there and things are now different with their vision. They could benefit from vision therapy. So what kind of people out there, if you could just give like a quick list of like people that would benefit from vision therapy, who would you mention? There's the obvious ones where people are permanently seeing double, maybe because their eyes are more postured in like esotropia or their eyes are more postured out exotropia. Are these common issues that people have? Um, those are kind of the obvious like, oh, I don't want to see double. But honestly, a lot of people don't even realize they're seeing two of something because they're so used to it. So it's like it's amazing for them to finally see properly for the first time and know, oh, this is how my eyes are supposed to be pointed and postured. And If it's always been that way, then how do they realize that it's an issue. They don't know any better. They start talking to their friends and they're like, oh yeah, to that. And oh, you don't see that way? Oh, okay. That would be a very scary moment in one person's life. Yeah, it would be. But that's just, I mean, that's one case where it's like, okay, obviously I need to get my eyes checked or something like that. We also have a lot of uh, TBIs, brain injuries, where vision is definitely affected by a head injury. Interpreting different things that they're seeing all of a sudden becomes overwhelming because there's so much to process. Visual processing, we deal with that. It's interesting that you mentioned that because I have a coworker of mine that suffered a TBI. She was in a car accident where her head hit the steering wheel and she went to get vision therapy and it fixed her situation. Yeah, it's it's life changing because all of a sudden you have this head injury and you have to relearn how to process all these things because essentially your head was shooken up and all of a sudden things that were easier before that would come naturally, that would be fast processing, all of a sudden it's difficult. And so visual processing, a lot of people don't think about it. They're like, oh, uh, yeah, we need to process that. But a lot of what you look at and interpret is part of the visual system. And in that sense, we also work with different activities that have to do with processing or visualizing or visual memory. So what are some other types of people that would benefit from vision therapy that are common? A lot of the times, kids who have trouble with tracking. So when they're reading, they skip lines a lot. Or maybe they reverse letters because their lefts and rights aren't that good. Dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Um, That's all visual information that you're inputting. Like you see a letter and somewhere along the line, your brain flips it. So how can we begin to really feel what is our left side? What is our right side? Because that's a lot of times where kids have trouble when they flip letters or when they see B's and D's and P's and Q's differently is because they don't have a strong understanding of their right and their left side. So doing activities where we focus on, okay, this is our right side. We're focusing just on the right side for today until they get a stronger understanding of that. And then that translates into when we do activities where there are letters that are like, If you flip them, they're the wrong way. The line is on the right side versus one like a B and a D. The line is on the other side. So having that basically strong foundation of understanding lefts and rights, then it translates into, okay, when I see something that is on a a left or a right, I can properly interpret what that is. Hmm. It's fascinating. Yeah. So one of the ways that I've benefited from vision therapy. While I've never personally gone to a clinic and seen a therapist, I work in a computer job and I'm staring at a screen all day and that causes eye strain. And I went online and researched ways to to remedy that. And one of the techniques is the 20-20-20 rule, which is every 20 minutes, 
look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. And that's supposed to help reduce eye strain. And I think it has. I think I still suffer from eye strain, but it's mainly because I don't remember to take that time every 20 minutes. It's more like more like every 80 minutes I do it. And, you know, I just got to get better at that. It's just a habit you have to build. But there are these little um, vision therapy exercises that we can do on our own to, to help our eyes. Correct. Yeah, actually. Um, that's one of the most important things that you can do is take breaks. We get so much screen time in this day and age that people don't realize the effect it has on your eyes. And then down the line, all of a sudden they're like, Oh, why are my eyes so strained at the end of the day? Well, it's because you're looking at one spot for hours and hours and hours and you're not allowing your eyes to take a break from staring at one place in space. We recommend breaks staring into the distance. So somewhere that's not so close. Otherwise, your eyes get so much time spent at a certain distance. All of a sudden, they don't get that practice they need to see far away. Everyone's got a smartphone now. Everyone's got their face in a smartphone 24-7. It makes me wonder what kind of damage we're doing to our vision. Well, yeah, and you can already see in um, highly tech communities. I mean, one case such as Korea, where they're so advanced technologically, there was a study and they looked at the eyes of most Koreans and most of them are myopic due to all their near work, all their close looking at screens, computers, they've trained their eyes to only focus close distances so that now when they look in the distance, it's blurry. They're nearsighted. They can't see far away. So myopic means nearsighted. Yes. Okay. So that's huge because it's slowly over time training your eyes to only work in a certain distance. And if you don't have that flexibility of looking close and far, your eyes don't get that proper training and that you need. Kind of like at the gym. If you never work a certain type of muscle, it never develops and it gets weak and it's not as efficient and you're not as good at doing those types of things. So what are... What are some of the signs and symptoms that a person exhibits that would imply that they could benefit from vision therapy? Just the basics, anything that's visual, anything, all of a sudden your eyes are blurry at near or at distance, or you are starting to see two of something. That means both of your eyes are not pointed in the same area. One eye is pointed somewhere else than the other eye and so they don't know how to work together and when that happens then you see two of something basically we all see one of something because both of our eyes have learned to look at something the exact same time together so we do a lot of activities that train both eyes to look in a certain area of space at the same time so anything that you notice that isn't visually normal, usually there's a sign, okay, maybe I need to go into a vision therapist or at least go to an optometrist. They check out your eyes because that's what all of our patients do is they get an exam first. So we know exactly what areas we need to work on in vision therapy. Another one that many people might not realize, like I was saying before, is anyone who has trouble tracking on a certain line so reading and they're skipping lines or skipping words their eyes are jumping they don't move smoothly so we do certain activities to help their eyes be able to follow something more smoothly and so they don't have jumps when their eyes are trying to read or look at something 
What about people who get headaches while reading? Is that something that you're familiar with? I was reading about one of the hints that you could benefit from vision therapy is if you go to a 3D movie and the 3D movie gives you headache or it hurts your eyes or it gives you motion sickness and then that that type of person tends to also receive headaches from reading or they receive motion sickness from being in a car or they have a lot of accidents. They fall downstairs. I don't know. So like, what are these hinting at? So yeah, if you trip over a lot of things or maybe run into walls, what is that dealing with? That's dealing with things that are in your peripheral vision. So they're not noticing the depth. They're not noticing the space. So we do a lot of spatial activities, depth perception activities. And 3D is one of those activities where you have to notice depth. So a lot of times when someone cannot visually process depth very well, it makes them nauseous or it makes them have a headache because they can't interpret it. Or if someone's getting nauseous, it's because it's so disorienting visually. So we kind of slow it down with them. We have a lot of 3D activities that we work on. And in my opinion, 3D is one of the most beneficial things you can do in vision therapy because it is training both of your eyes to look in the same space. And it is just so great for processing depth, clarity, as well as interpreting space and using your eye muscles and strengthening them. So kind of slow it down and we use Vectograms, which is several different 3D activities that you can do with polarized glasses. And we just kind of work the edge, I like to say, where it's able for them to get 3D to see something floating, but still like a little bit hard. And so each session we kind of go a little bit farther. Maybe the 3D circle floats a little closer to them or a little farther away. We kind of work where they're having trouble and go from there and then also ask questions like how far do you notice the circle popping out what do you notice in your peripheral vision is it clear can you reach out and touch it like maybe they can see the circle floating but when they reach out and touch it they touch somewhere else so they don't they're kind of lost in that to me that tells me they're kind of lost in space or they can't interpret depth very well. So then we'll work on different spatial and depth perception activities. Work on localizing it. Localizing it. Localizing, like being able to pinpoint where something is in space. Okay. With their finger, with a pointer. So we've touched on the benefits. We've talked about signs and symptoms. So say somebody out there who's listening, they've thought, okay, well, I, I exhibit some of these signs and symptoms. I want to come in to see a vision therapist. What are some services that are available to a person who comes into a, a vision therapist office? Like what should they expect? I guess it depends on what they are having trouble with. Yeah, uh, And it depends on the practice that you're going to. But specifically at mine, initially you fill out a, a symptom checklist and kind of a family history on medical things. And so it kind of really pinpoints to the doctor before they see you what you are struggling with visually or what kind of problems you have. It's a two-page checklist, so it kind of gets in more in depth of things that are struggling because we really want to know what we want to work on. And then you go in for like a consult where they tell you about vision therapy and they give you like an exam so then they can see where you're at that kind of covers a broad spectrum like not only acuity but like your depth perception whether you can look in one spot and touch something else in your peripheral vision that's central peripheral integration 3d how much 3d can you see so we kind of use that data from the exam that the optometrist does to translate into, okay, what do we need to work on in vision therapy? And we also, if there's other things that you want to test, we have a visual processing test that you can additionally take that lasts around two hours. 
and we go through a series of tests more in depth of things that you might attest more in depth where we can really pinpoint the areas that are struggling for you in visually and in visual processing. Oh, and then typically if you do a vision therapy unit, it's around 12 sessions and typically the first unit you see improvements. The second unit, you're kind of solidifying and a better understanding of those improvements. And then the third unit is kind of like making those gains more automatic so it doesn't take effort for you. So typically the average person with an average diagnosis takes about three units, but everyone's different. So a little less than one year for a full program. Mm -hmm. But you can sign up basically for a unit at a time. And do it at your own leisure. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So let's talk success stories. How many clients have you seen approximately? Probably thousands. Not just your own, but others as well within the place that you work. Um, I basically see 30 patients a week. So and each patient comes once a week. Mm -hmm. So you've had a lot of exposure to different issues that your clients have. And you've been able to see the progress that they've made throughout a unit. So what are some of the most notable success stories that you've seen yourself that makes you think wow, like this actually does change people's lives for the better. I think that there might be some listeners at home that are skeptical. So like, what are some things that you could tell them that might make them think about this differently? Oh, yeah. I mean, even some of the patients we've had that sign up for a unit are kind of skeptical themselves. Like they've never really heard about it and they don't know what to think. And there's also all kinds of stuff on the internet that you don't know who to believe. Sure, sure. What I would tell you is give it a shot. Try it. That's what we tell all our patients who are skeptical. Let's see the results at, even after one unit. Let's see if there's improvement after one unit. And you know what? Every doubter, every person that we've had come into our office, there have been improvements. So it can only help you, not hurt you. So... I would think a therapy is better than no therapy. But just imagine if you saw improvements continued on to solidify those, your life could be changed. Like I've had patients all ages, but some that were kids that were struggling with reading that hated reading, that never wanted to read, right? But in school, like that's a big part of school. And so they were struggling academically. Mm -hmm. And in just a few units, one of my patients went up six reading levels. Wow. And she, for the first time, loved to read, started reading books that she wanted to read. She'd read for fun. Now, if it were me, I would have been like, well, my vision's better, but I still hate reading because I have to read the subject matter that they want me to read in school. Yeah. <laughs> For me, I, I liked reading much better once I was able to read whatever I wanted, but that's a different situation. Sure. But imagine you don't, maybe you don't necessarily know why your kid doesn't like to read and maybe they would enjoy it, but it's just so tiring for them. And imagine their potential if even just looking at words on a page and reading words on a page were simple, like that changes your whole academic career. I mean, it goes with you through high school, college. It alters your entire life trajectory. Yeah, that's pretty big. So you, you've noticed a lot of kids improve their ability to read. Kids and is, adults, all ages. Wow. So some adults come in with this issue and they've struggled with it their whole life or it became onset in their adult years? It's both. It depends on the diagnosis. So what else? Any other success stories you can think um, of? Yeah, I've had patients that could not see 3D, that everything was just flat for them. And see, and that's like this, this woman who gave that TED Talk, Sue. Sue Berry. Yeah, everyone, you should check out Sue Berry on YouTube or Tech Talk. It's amazing. And it pretty much describes everything that we do in vision therapy. And the 
outcome uh, by doing vision therapy, how it can change your life. Okay. Well, so tell me about this, this client that you helped with this issue. So basically she didn't see very much depth, 3D. She was a brain injury patient and everything after her accident, everything just seemed her world around her seemed like a mess of things to process alone looking at things if especially if it was like a lot of visual clutter it was very hard to process and differentiate between all those little things a lot of people don't even think about that because it's second nature for them but things that are very visually cluttered it's hard for them to process so even processing that I guess for me, it's like, I don't even know what that means. Like, I'm trying to imagine what it, what it would be like to not be able to see in 3D. Well, it, it's like 2D. Everything is flat. If you watch those cartoons where everything just seems flat. Anyway, by the end of therapy, she'd have these brief moments where she was driving down a road and then she would see this tree pop out at her for the first time she was seeing this depth she was seeing all the sides and space around the tree that it was not just this flat thing but there was different branches going out in different directions which was amazing and she she said she would just cry and bawl because she had never seen this before so to me it Even if you're skeptical, even if you're like, what is this thing? Imagine the potential, the life changing things that just by doing vision therapy, you can achieve with a patient. Like they see the world in a different way that they've never seen before. They have a chance to see things in depth that they thought they would have never been able to see after their accident. Or maybe they saw it before and they feel like, oh, I can't. My eyes will never be the same after this injury. But no, they can be. If you're willing to look into these different avenues of vision therapy, we can help you retrain your brain to process, reanalyze what you're looking at so that you can get back to or close to where you were before. So I think that is a very powerful and amazing thing. Now, we mentioned earlier this woman, Sue Barry, and she's famous for writing a book about fixing her gaze, which is related to only being able to see in 2D and then through vision therapy, she's able to see in 3D. Mm -hmm. And she talks a lot publicly about an activity that she learned in vision therapy called the Brock string. Brock string, yeah. So I was wondering if maybe you could explain what a Brock string is and how it works. Mm-hmm. So a Brock string is great. It can be used in several different ways, but essentially it is a very good eye teaming tool, which in a sense means it helps give feedback of where your eyes are pointing. Are both of my eyes pointing at the same spot? Are they pointing in a different spot and can I focus in one spot and notice my surroundings peripheral vision so it is essentially it's a string with some beads on it what you do is you one person the therapist holds the other end of the string and the patient holds the other part of the string up to their nose and the therapist puts the bead in the middle of the string and says to the patient, I want you to look at the bead and tell me what you say. So when they look at the bead, it's kind of weird looking at it because the patient will see these two. St- if you if both your eyes are pointed at the bead and you are noticing your peripheral vision, you will see two strings in front and two strings in back. So essentially everything in your peripheral vision will look like there's two. It'll double. Double. And that's how you know that both your eyes are, if you see one bead, both your eyes are pointed at the bead. And if you're noticing peripheral vision, you will see the two strings in front, two and back. Now, if you aren't noticing peripheral vision 
or one eye is wanting to not work in the same way as your other eye, one of the strings might disappear. So that tells me that we need to focus more on the eye that is having trouble. Or let's say you're looking on the Brock string and you see two beads. Well, that means you're not looking at the bead you're looking somewhere else. So it's difficult in itself to just keep your eyes in one spot at the bead and notice the strings in your peripheral. Now you can also move the bead in different places. So you can move it closer. Can my eyes fixate really close, really close to my nose? Can they stay there? Is the bead blurry? Or you can move the bead farther. Can my eyes focus at distance? And that's what helps with getting better at seeing 3D. It allows you to know where your eyes are pointing. Mm -hmm. So for those maybe who have trouble seeing 3D, their eyes are not pointing in the right spot or they aren't able to point their eyes close or far or have that flexibility. So this is an activity that shows you, okay, when I am looking close, are my eyes really pointed where I think they're pointed? And it gives you that feedback. So it's a very useful tool. You can also add other beads on it and then you can do jumps, bead jumps. So you can look close at one bead and then jump far. Do my eyes easily do that? Mm -hmm. Are my eyes flexible in that way or does it take a second to readjust? So you can build stamina that way and feedback of are my eyes pointing where I think they are at distance? Are they pointing where I think they are at near? And that's another useful tool. And then just having control of going from close to far. And um, also you can move around the string so you can do different gazes. Like if you're looking more up, looking more down, am I still able to focus on the bead? Or if you have a long string, we have other rock strings that are really long. So it kind of practices more distance fusion of the bead. Yeah, it's a very helpful IT main tool. And that tool is something that is used commonly in vision therapy for people who are who see in 2D. It's used for everybody. Oh. Because it's important that we want to see if everyone's eyes are if they understand where their eyes are pointing. I see. If they can keep it one bead at different distances. So there are several tools that you use in vision therapy under a professional's supervision and guidance. But what about for a listener at home who maybe they're considering vision therapy, but in the meantime, they're just thinking about, well, what are some of the ways that I can just take care of my eyes? What are some of the things that I can do, whether it be eye exercises or just maintenance, things that I can do to to take care of them? Are there any recommendations that you can make to a listener as far as just how to take care of their eyes? Yeah, I think if you, you can even use it with your finger. If you look at your finger, is it one finger really close to your nose? What do you mean? If I hold my finger out in front of my face? In front of your face, bring it closer in towards your nose. Yeah, I'm doing it right now. Okay. At what point does it ever get blurry? No. Does it ever turn into two fingers? Uh, Is it supposed to? Well, if it turns into two fingers, that means you aren't looking at it. That means your eyes are looking somewhere else. Your eyes basically are getting so strained from looking at it. It's like, ugh, I don't want to look at it anymore. I'm going to look away. I think the microphone is blocking it. I see a microphone and a finger. Anyway. So it is an eye teaming activity though that you can practice because both of your eyes are having to focus on your finger to keep it one finger teaming like go teaming. team yeah like team so oh. your eyes are working together as a team i see so that's why we say i teaming okay yeah we want them to work together and both evenly not one eye working harder than the other eye interesting because that's the most efficient way and then you don't have visual problems so yeah looking using your finger bringing in towards your nose looking close and then also looking far can you jump your eyes from your finger that's close to something that's far does it take a second is it blurry all those things have to do with focusing and eye control and are my eyes pointed where i think they are okay any other tips you can recommend or um 
home, even, you know, even just walking about your normal day, what do I notice in my peripheral vision? Um, can I really notice things in my peripheral vision? Just being conscious of that can help exercise your eyes. Yeah, it helps exercise the depth perception. Maybe people who have trouble with depth perception. Really, a lot of vision therapy is awareness that maybe we didn't put a lot of thought into before, but just being more aware and doing activities where it really f- helps us focus a lot more on things that we haven't focused on where it becomes second nature, where we're always using our peripheral vision to analyze space and where we're walking and how it helps us to navigate through whatever we're doing and think at the same time. A lot of times it's hard for someone to process what in their peripheral vision, they spend so much focus on that, that they can't pay attention to what they're centrally doing. So we do a lot of central uh, and peripheral integration as well. So I, I asked some of my Facebook friends uh, what kind of vision issues or vision questions do they have? And I just wanted to do some relaying of that to you to see what you have to say. Is that okay? Mm-hmm. Real quick. I know you, you have to actually get to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me just read a few off of Facebook. My left and right eye do not work with each other. They fought for dominance when I was younger, and now I don't see out of my right eye unless my left eye is closed. When both are open, my right eye vision is considered peripheral. Mm -hmm. What do you think of that? I think both eyes are not working together. And slowly over time, the dominant eye kind of took over because the weaker eye wasn't able to keep up with the dominant eye and so yes I think vision therapy is definitely definitely beneficial for that because we'll do certain activities maybe that kind of block off the dominant eye so that the eye that's having trouble will get more time to essentially use the muscles and practice focusing in the right way so that both eyes can learn to better work together evenly But we definitely will do several activities at first where we're kind of essentially blocking off the dominant eye so we can give that that time to the eye that's having trouble. Not completely patch, just kind of prevent it from doing certain things. Mm -hmm. Okay. next question. My sister just posted today asking if other people get blurry vision after eating or if it's just her. (laughs) (laughs) I... I don't think that's normal. Yeah, I don't know. I would have to ask, does that happen at any other time or what stuff is she eating? I I mean, my first thought would be blood pressure related. Maybe, yeah. Because that can cause blurry vision. I don't know. Next question. As I get older, I'm finding that I need things to be very bright in order to read them. It's not about focus exactly. It's that I literally can't read some text unless the screen is turned to full brightness or in the case of something like the ingredients on the back of a food package, I'm shining a flashlight on it. What's up with that? Is there any way to adjust this? So their ability to detect light is becoming worse, Mm -hmm. it sounds like. Yeah, I mean, with age, everyone's eyes age. It's unavoidable. It's called presbyopia. No. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so, yeah, things are going to get more blurry as you get older. No. Things might, seeing in dim no. light might be, be more challenging. Why? Yeah. I mean, I would essentially maybe play around with the brightness and try the lowest brightness where you could see something and mm-hmm. try focusing on that and seeing if you keep things maybe less bright over time your eyes might adjust better to something less bright and slowly go less bright and less bright but Mm -hmm. i don't know i have to see the person to determine and then this last question it might be out of scope it sounds like it's for an optometrist but he said why do we still use the which one looks better one or two method for eye appointments it feels outdated inaccurate especially if a patient gets anxiety or stress over it first of all it's they're just trying to prescribe your lenses so yes, I can see how like that would be give you anxiety. I want to choose the right one. I want to choose the right one. But honestly, I mean, 
in the broad scheme of things, let's say you go with a lens and she prescribes you glasses or he prescribes you glasses and you end up not liking them. Well, just go back to your optometrist and they'll do it again. So it's kind of a non-issue. And what you're saying kind of flows into this second part of his question, which is I just got new glasses. They haven't done much to, to help my vision. Things aren't clearer. My prescription didn't change much, but my vision with these new glasses doesn't seem to have gotten much better either. Everything seems pretty much the same, which is kind of frustrating. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I would give some time to adjust for your eyes to adjust. It's not going to be instantaneous. It won't work right away. Yeah. You need to really give it some time to really see how you like it and how it affects your eyes because it's not like oh I'm gonna put on my eyes and my eyes are instantly gonna adjust no it takes some time for your eyes to adjust and maybe you might not see the difference but if you I mean the optometrist pretty much knows what she's doing like she may prescribe to you maybe a lower prescription just so that your eyes will get stronger or who knows the case but or maybe not to say that this is true for, of everybody, maybe certain people don't notice little tiny differences very well. So maybe to you, maybe if it's only like a 0.25 change in prescription, it may be hard for you to see the difference. But in the long, broad scheme of things, it, it definitely makes a difference. So... Well, I want to respect your time. I know you're busy. I know you have some clients to see, some vision therapy to perform. But before we go, I just wanted to let you have the final word. Are there any things that you'd like to leave our listeners at home with? Any parting wisdom? Yeah, I would definitely encourage everybody out there to go. If any of these problems or issues that you have been struggling with or been kind of on the line about, oh, is this me? Like, what is up with my eyes? Am I just, you know, not a good reader? Go get your eyes checked by an optometrist and see what she or he says, because vision therapy is an awesome, awesome, awesome tool that you can use to better your eyes and better your life. So yeah, I would recommend doing that, especially, you know, come to to the practice I work at, Alderwood Vision Therapy. I think it's one of the biggest practices in the U.S. So maybe the world, not sure, but I know for sure the U.S. Wow. Yeah. Nicole Rand, thank you for your time Mm -hmm. and for this interview. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the John Top of It podcast. For links to useful information from this episode, as well as show notes, visit johntopofit.blog. What topic would you like the next episode to be about? Have your say by sending me a message on Twitter at John Top of It. If you're chosen, I'll give you a shout out and use your suggestion for the next episode. Finally, if you like this show, please subscribe and leave me a review on iTunes. I'd really, really appreciate it. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next episode.